What's up, everybody? Today we're cooking the king of all steaks, the tomahawk ribeye. I'm excited for this one. I am doing the entire cook on my offset smoker. This thing is a beast. It's almost four pounds. Look at the thickness in there. That's probably three or four inches right there. I already dry brined this, so if it's a little darker red mahogany color, nice, dry, nice and dry on the outside. That's from an overnight dry brine with kosher salt. This thing is a heavyweight and it is USDA prime, beautiful marbling. I am very excited for this. We're gonna rock this thing at 250 under the smoke for as long as it takes to get up to temperature. And then uh, once we hit probably like 125, I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna sear it in the firebox. A Little bit nervous for that, I've never done that before. I was planning on just doing it on my Weber kettle, but if I got the smoker going, I got a fire right here. I might as well use that live fire to sear this off. So. Follow along, we'll see how this thing comes out. I ended up measuring this steak and it came out to 3.75 inches thick. So this is essentially a small prime rib roast. I decided to keep the seasoning very simple here. Here I'm putting a olive oil binder on it and I'm just hitting it with some cracked black pepper. I'm not adding any more salt. This was covered with kosher salt for the overnight dry brine. I typically would have used a little bit more of a coarse salt, like a 16 mesh black pepper actually out of that so I'm just using a typical Costco black pepper grinder. Make sure you hit both sides of the steak pretty evenly and hit the fat as well and we're ready to put this on the smoker. I'm gonna sear this thing in the firebox okay so a couple things that I am taking into consideration because of that. Number one uh, I'm gonna need a nice coal bed it's gonna have to be a very hot fire in order to get the cast iron up to searing temperature. Um, so I'm gonna do that with some smaller splits, let those go for a little bit, but I also don't wanna build the fire too high because then I won't be able to fit my cast iron pan inside of the firebox. So I'm gonna keep it nice and low and hot with smaller splits. And then these two are some nice flat pieces of wood. This one's relatively flat too. I'm gonna to put those right on top of the fire and put my cast iron right on top of that and hopefully it does not tip over. So that's my plan. We'll see how it actually plays out. This is all white oak and I'm fortunate enough to live surrounded by white and red oak. So anytime one of these trees come down, I have wood. My mic ended up being off for this scene here. Basically what I'm explaining is that I'm putting the tomahawk onto the smoker with a wire rack. Reason for that, it's just gonna be easier to move the steak around. And additionally, less surface area of that steak is gonna be on the grates. So we might get a little bit of airflow underneath the steak as well, as well as over the top. I have the pit set up to run at 250 degrees throughout the duration of this cook. And we will be checking back shortly. Here, 30 minutes into this cook. At this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the tomahawk, and I'm also gonna rotate the wire rack. The reason for that is because all of the heat in the cooking chamber is going over the top of the steak right now. So I wanna flip it so it'll cook evenly. I'm gonna rotate it for the same purpose. I want it to cook evenly, and right now one side is closest to the fire, so I'm gonna expose the other side of the steak to the fire. We'll have a look, see how we're looking. With an offset, all of the heat that's entering the cooking chamber and the airflow is coming directly over the top of this tomahawk right here. So I'm just gonna rotate it here to expose the other side of the steak. And then I'm also gonna rotate the entire wire rack because this side right here of the tomahawk is being directly exposed to that heat in the airflow as well. So we're gonna expose the other side. 
The other thing that I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna insert a meat thermometer probe into the direct center of the steak. That way I can just track internal temperatures. This smoker has a pretty cool feature for an offset, it's pretty rare. I can actually insert a probe through the exterior over here into the cooking chamber without the wire getting bent or uh, pinched between the door here. So it's a pretty cool feature on this bit. I'll show you how it works. So you unscrew this little gasket right here and inside of this gasket is a little rubber plug. You remove that rubber plug and you can insert your probe. You can put that rubber plug right back in on the other side of that wire and you're not going to lose any air or any smoke throughout that port. With a bigger cut, here's how I make sure I get the dead center of my steak. I measure with the probe and pinch off at the exact edge of the steak with my fingers. And then when you insert the probe into the center of the steak, once your fingers hit the outside of the steak, you know that you're at the exact center of that steak. Common sense, but it's a trick that I use every time. Okay, so this is temping a little bit lower than what I expected. After 30 minutes, it's only at 66 degrees. So if this continues, what I'll do is I'll just take the, the wire rack and I'll put it on the top shelf. There's more heat in the top of the cooking chamber, so it'll cook faster if it's on the top shelf. All right, we're an hour into this reverse here. So it's been, smoker's been at between 225 and 250 for an hour. We'll see how the steak looks real quick, and then we'll check the internal temperature. Looking pretty good here. And let's check that internal temp over here. Close this up. Ninety-three. I'm bringing this to 125 degrees, so I'm aiming for medium rare for this big cut here. So I'm going to remove it about 10 degrees uh, before the sear from my final desired internal temperature, which would be 135. So I'm going to guess this will be another 15 or 20 minutes until we're close to 125. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start preheating my cast iron skillet, so I'm not putting a cold skillet. Um, into the fire. So two ways you could do this. You could throw it in your smoker to start warming up. I'm going to throw mine just in my oven at like 350, 400 degrees till I'm ready to bring it out here. Then I'm going to build my fire, uh, keep the coals nice and low, get a nice flat platform, put the cast iron in the smoker right upside down so I got that nice flat surface and we're going to sear. Hopefully you get it ripping hot in there, get a nice sear and uh, I think this is going to be pretty good. All right, we're finally temping at 125 degrees internal on this tomahawk. It's been 90 minutes. It's a long cook, but it's also a huge piece of meat. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna transfer our cast iron skillet to the firebox, and we're gonna sear this thing off. Then we're gonna eat this. All right, the only thing I'm gonna do quick, I just got a paper towel with some olive oil on it. I'm just gonna hit the bottom of the pan a little bit grease it up before I put it into the firebox. I don't want to be pouring oil inside there and cause a fire. And I also don't want the steak to stick, so. This was in my oven before. I figured I'd bring it out and keep it warm inside the pit as we got closer. The biggest challenge towards the end was having a nice coal bed without huge chunks of log or splits inside of the firebox. Um, so I was using very small splits towards the end Got some nice heat in there, got a decent coal bed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place two relatively flat splits on the outside of the coal bed here and just rest the cast iron right on top of that. Let that heat up for a couple minutes and then I'm gonna sear the steak off. All right, so I'm just gonna hit this coal bed, get everything nice and broken down. Now I took my flattest split here. You can see it's pretty flat. 
and I split that in half. So I'm going to place these two in on the outside. And this is what the cast iron skillet is going to sit on top of. I'm going to push these down into the coals. Get as much of a flat surface as I can for that cast iron. I think that'll do it. And so I have the skillet. I'm going to place it upside down. So the reason I'm using the bottom is because there's like an 18 inch bone sticking off of this thing. So it's not going to sit flat in the skillet. So I'm using the bottom and I grease the bottom a little bit. We're going to let this heat up for a couple minutes and then we're going to sear that steak. While the skillet's preheating in the firebox, we'll just take a look at the steak, get it all prepped to just throw right on. We'll remove the probe and just see what the steak looks like after 90 minutes. It already smells delicious. So this thing is sitting at rare right now, 125 degrees internal. When we sear this off and let it rest for 10 or 15 minutes, we should be sitting at a perfect medium rare. But I want to get a real nice sear on both sides and on the fat here. All right, we're over 400 on the surface of the back of the cast iron where we're going to be searing. So we're going to throw the steak on. All right, here we go. I'm gonna stay close just in case this gets uneven. And that is what you like to hear. Gotta get my mic close so you guys can hear this. Unfortunately, with the noise canceling on the mic, you cannot hear the sear. All right, it's been 90 seconds. Let's see how we're looking. Do another 90 on this side and then hit the back. The overall verdict with the sear, I'm not pumped with it. With the pan, I, I feel like it just didn't get hot enough. In the future, when I do this again, I'm gonna use a small grate right in there, right over the fire. As for the most important part, the doneness on the inside, and of course the flavor at the very end. We're looking good so far on a medium rare. Let's get that cross section. The finish was a desired medium rare. The crazy thing about this, there's a smoke ring on this steak. Look at the edges. You can see the smoke ring on both sides. Yeah, I was really not expecting this steak to have a smoke ring, but here we are. Uh, overall, the finish, uh, medium rare, almost a medium, a, a little higher than I think it should have been because I was so concerned with the sear. I kept trying to add a few extra seconds here and there, trying to get a better crust on this thing, but just didn't happen. At the end of the day, with the quality of meat that this is and cooking it over a live fire from start to finish, this was one of the better steaks that I've ever made. And the whole family was happy with it. A little bit of gray there. That's from me over searing one of the sides, trying to achieve that crust that I never did. But... Let me know in the comments if you want to see me make maybe a short with this uh, this method with a grate inside the firebox instead of using the cast iron. Let me know. I want to give it another shot and make it the best steak I've ever had.